Hello, my name is Jan Linhart, and I want to compliment you on making what I consider the single most important investment in yourself that you could make. And I'm saying that based on my 15 years experience with water electrolysis equipment. Now that you've received your box, let's first inspect it to make sure that everything's okay. In my case, the box had been slid open in order to inspect the content to make sure there was no illegal content inside the box. Next, we'll take a look and see what is actually inside the box. Welcome back. Let's take a look at what's actually supposed to be inside the box. First of all, there's the machine itself inside a nice protective bag. Next, a power cord for powering up the machine. Hoses that will be cut to size in order to fit. A bracket to mount it on the wall if you so desire. An inverter that allows you to move the water from faucet to the machine. A discharge hose. A bag of various screws and clamps. And a manual. Next, let's take a look at how to hook it up. All right, let's continue with the installation. First thing I want to do is remove the existing aerator. If the gasket is in good shape, I want to reuse that gasket, and it is in very good shape. So I will place it upon my adapter and tighten the adapter. Next thing I do is I take one of the gaskets, place it inside my new aerator, and I screw that one in place. Okay. I have also cut my hose in half, and as you can see, one end has a little tip on it. That's the discharge hose. I will put that one aside. The other one I have placed the metal sleeve over the plastic hose. I will now place the plastic hose and the metal sleeve over here and tighten it. Okay. I should now have a good stream of water. normal and through the inverter. Next let's take a look underneath the machine itself how we connect that up. The first thing I'm going to do is take my nice bag put it down on the table and place my machine on top of it. What we're after are these two connections here. This one is a low pressure, that is your discharge hose. So that one, we're simply going to remove the little cap and grab one of my little pressure adapters. It should be a little thing like that. Perhaps a little thing like this is what we're after. Pinch that, pinch it with a pair of pliers so I can insert it into the loop and close it back up again. Now I insert that and remember it has a plastic end in the other end, a little tip for it. I will now insert that on top of here. Once I have it up to the point where it's nicely covered, 
I now take my pliers again, expand them, and I move my clamp up. Okay. Now my discharge hose is in place and ready to go. On the incoming hose, we remove the little plastic piece again, unscrew the adapter, okay. place the adapter inside the hose, the hose inside the adapter actually. As you can see, I've done that now. I'm not going to push that onto here. There. Push that onto here. There we go. And tighten it. You may have to use a pair of pliers to tighten it sufficiently. Okay. I believe I have it in place. So that's what it should look like now. Incoming hose right here. Discharge hose with a little tip right there. Now that all the hoses are in place, we now take the machine. And stand it up. Next thing we'll do is to screw on the discharge hose. There's a little rubber stopper right here. I'm going to take that one out. We don't need that. I'm going to straighten out the hose and we're going to insert it right here and turn it until it is securely in place. Now it is securely in place. I will now point that down towards the faucet. Get my extra hoses out of the way. And put my discharge hose down in the sink. Now the last thing I have to do is to plug in the power. Power comes in right here on the side. And I plug it in right there and into my outlet. Okay. We should now be ready to test the equipment. Okay, we should now be ready to turn on the equipment. First, what I want to do, I want to have my inverter pointing down. I establish a good clear stream. As you can see, the water is flowing nice and clear. If I have it running like that, I have too much pressure. So I back it off until I have a good clear stream. At this point, I can now turn on my machine. And I can change the inverter to send the water through the machine. I can now, with the restrictor, I can change the flow rate from almost nothing up to whatever I want as I dial it. So let's go ahead and give it a little extra pressure here. You'll notice I have my faucet completely on, but my flow restrictor here is preventing me from getting too much pressure through the machine. Now that I have found the position that I like, now I'll just leave it in that position. So next time I come in, I say, here we go, a good clear stream, and turn it on. And then select what I want. At this point, I'm now getting some really awesome alkaline water. Next, let's go through some of the settings. I'm going to turn the machine on. 
and I'm going to push and hold the alkaline one button for a few seconds. It'll beep at me and you'll see that the temperature is right now set for 60 degrees. I can now hit the button down here, the cleaning button, and I can change that to whatever temperature I want my hot water to come out. That's uh, 60 degrees centigrade. Now that one is set. I'm not going to hold the alkaline 2 button. Hold that in place. And we're going to set the time. It is 322. So I'm going to go backwards. 3. Hit the button again. 22. Hit the button again. And now my time is correct. Except, of course, uh, that uh, this would be military time. I'm going to hold it. And I'll go forward until I get to 1522. 15, 15, and 22. So now we have the time set correctly for 322 or 1522. I'm not going to hold button number three, the cleaning button. I'm going to hold that one. Okay, this is alkaline three. What we're doing is we're setting the pH level. Five. One, two, three, four, five. I want the highest pH I can possibly get. So now I set that in place. The acid one button. That is for resetting your filter. And so we're okay there. Resetting filter number two in case you had external filters. And reset filter number three. And then we can set how frequently we want it to uh, change to automatically reverse. And I'm going to set mine for 60 liters. Every 60 liters, the system will automatically inverse direction on the electric flow, thereby allowing the filters to the plates to get cleaned.